Y'all come with me down to Nashville, Tennessee. Landing at BNA International Airport, we're going to take a short 35 minute drive down I-24 to Murfreesboro. Or as I know it, the borough. Here lies the home of the MTSU Blue Raiders, my alma mater. Welcome everybody to the start of my MTSU dynasty. Now before we begin here, I want to say thank you everybody for tuning in here. I know I've been gone for a little bit, pretty much with videos. I know we had one stream here on uh, Thursday, but I was gone on vacation. And then for those who didn't you know, catch the stream, I was gone on vacation though, but um, for a week and then ended up coming back and I hit, got hit with some sort of stomach bug or whatever. So I don't know if it was from when, where I went, I was down in Cancun and whatnot. So I don't know if it was from there. I don't know if it's just something I just came back with. I, I really don't know. It, who knows what the hell happened with that. But we are officially back here. We're going to be hopping in here to College Football 25. I'm excited to get this one underway here. You guys know we are on that road to 1,000 subscribers. And I would love to be able to hit that here as we get here more into this series, man. I appreciate all the support you guys have shown the channel the past few months. We've really grown. We've grown quite a bit here over the last few months, man. It's been it's been great. It's been fantastic. Ready to see more. Um, for those you know interested in the it may be the show series, that's not gonna stop soon. But right now, I do wanna get get some college football 25 content up because I'm late. I'm real late at getting stuff done. So I'm finally feeling a lot better. And we're gonna go ahead and get things here underway now. I'm excited to uh, yeah get here with my alma mater, man. They're right now a one and a half star here on the game. Um, 76 overall, 77 defense. So we'll see what the Blue Raiders are all about. We will be taking over as a head coach. Now, this won't be my story. And they actually just ended up hiring a new head coach and Derek Mason, the former Vanderbilt head coach. And it won't be his story either. I am actually going to be going with a completely new person. Now, unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see this, uh, this player. This is back when I was playing NCAA 14. And this is a former recruit I ended up having. Um, by the time, you know, he ended up making his way up, he ended up being a, well, by the time it was, when it came down to recruiting, I got the team pretty built out pretty well. And he was a big five-star prospect. It was like one of the first five stars I ended up getting. And he was a wide receiver named a Bob Miller. Now, this dude was literally like a Randy Moss, like Calvin Johnson clone. Like, this dude was absolutely a monster. 6'5", 235, 230, something like that. And he was a complete, he was a complete boss, man. He he was doing his damn thing, man. It was, it was pretty impressive how well he was, man. I hate, you know, you weren't able to see how he was, like, in Madden or anything. And so, we don't really have a NFL career, you know, that we know of. But he was a first-round draft pick. Um, he ended up, I think... <laughs> It was crazy because, you know, back then, they didn't really transfer a lot. So, I, I mean, he could have started right away. But I was like, nah. I'm going to redshirt you, and I, I'm letting you play this entire four-year run. Had to make sure he didn't leave early and whatnot. So, but yeah, dude, dude was absolute stud. So, that's who we're going with here as the head coach. He's coming back to his alma mater of MTSU as well. And he's going to see if he can turn this thing back around and see if he can get things going well for us man but i'm excited to get things going um pipeline state i know there's quite a few places we could kind of go um especially they really kind of narrowed down some of the stuff you know you got like southern california south georgia south florida which you know got parts of like texas like yeah north texas and then you got like a southwest it was the southwest texas was on there as well or something like that so i don't know exactly where you know i was gonna go i was kind of thinking it over i was thinking well Tennessee's already one of their pipelines. I imagine Georgia is, too. At least it helps with the Kevin Byer connection. So, then we're going to go with South Florida. Um, you know, get, down, get into that Miami area, Dade County, and everything, whatever else is considered here in that South Florida region. So, we'll go with that. Um, this stuff, I really don't know exactly what all it entails, but not really going to mess with it too much. I will leave everything balanced and whatnot, and, yeah, we're going to move on. And they've been since 2004. I'm not, not exactly sure when exactly they made that uh, jump to D1. But in the last few years, honestly, really, actually since 2006, Rick Stockstill was the head coach of this team. And he, he was there all the way for, what was that, 17, 18 years, something like that, man. I mean, he was there a long time. Had some good, had some, had some, had some I, I guess, you know, for the most part, kind of mid. I mean, yeah, 2009 was the best year, 10 and 3. But. A lot of years that were kind of pretty similar ended up being 
let go and now yeah, it's time for Bob Miller to take over put his name on that dotted line there at the bottom and we're gonna be getting this thing underway and excited I know I keep saying it but I am really excited for this game man uh, we got recruiting stuff we got schedules top stories and stuff we'll worry about all that later I did go with the recruiting uh, thing as well I mean it's kind of really no point not to also being a former player you know might help give them a little bit of a um you know ahead of the game or whatnot but um but yeah i mean it's kind of i feel like this seems to be the best route to go i haven't looked at the other ones i don't know but recruiting seems to be a pretty well it's, it's always been a big deal here so i think the first one you know he's a former wide out so probably shouldn't go in the receivers but just because they're gonna kind of he'll have a better look and understanding of those guys so we'll put it in there to start off and then, you know, we'll venture out and we'll hit the other ones up too. But, yeah, like I said, he'll – just somebody that, you know, former wide receiver is going to have a better eye for looking for wide receivers and whatnot. So, we'll take a look here at the team, see how everything's going. I'm not going over the entire team, but we can just get a good look and see kind of where we're at um, right now. But with quarterback, we have a 81 overall junior red shirt, Nicholas Vadatiato. I'm not exactly sure. Granted, yes. I went to MTSU. I'm a Tennessee Vols fan, so it's not. I mean, I keep up very, very little what's going down at MT. But um, yeah, so you know, not bad. 83 speed, 85 acceleration, 90 throw power. In the backup doesn't look too bad. It doesn't have the best speed, but accuracy wise, might not be too bad. But you know, definitely probably gonna look at a, a quarterback here potentially. I'm sure in the in the class. See if anybody's interested in coming here. We got Frank Pezen at running back. So we got a lot of senior running backs. My gosh, got four of them. Well, we're definitely going to be losing a lot of guys. They all senior red shirts at that, too. My goodness. Uh, fullback, they, right now, they're listed as air raid. I don't know exactly what playbook I'm going to run just yet. I've kind of been playing with some stuff to kind of see what I do and don't like. Um, we got quite a bit of juniors, it looks like. Right now, highest rate overall guy is Omari Kelly out of Trustville, Alabama. He's a deep threat, 92 speed, 93 acceleration. Not too bad at all. Uh, we got Javante Sherman, another deep threat, 6'2", out of Georgia. Kellen Stewart, he's a shorter deep threat. But, hey, looks like to be the fastest guy that we have here at receiver, 93-95. So, yeah, not bad at all. Um, we do got a couple red shirt freshmen that are down here. So, we got a true freshman that probably end up being red shirt in Josh Evans. 6'3", though, pretty tall guy, but nothing crazy with the speed, just 86 across the board. Looks like he could use a little bit of work, though. 68 catching, so I don't know. He's a 59 overall. I guess we'll see how that ends up shaking out. Um, we got a bunch of tight ends as well here. We got a senior red shirt here in Holden Willis. 6'4", though. That's pretty decent size. Can move a bit, too, man. 87 speed. That's not bad at all coming out of that tight end spot. Um, the offensive line, though. This is where everybody is struggling. It probably doesn't even matter how good your team is. Like Everybody's just struggling with the O-line. Um, we got a left tackle who's a 64 overall. Left guard is an 80. He's a sophomore red shirt, so that's good. Mateo, all right, I like it. If we can just make sure we keep him here, be good. Uh, okay, center's 84 overall, for, um, but problem is senior red shirt. So Julius is going to be gone after this year. 66 overall freshman red shirt. We do have a senior behind him. I'm curious if the senior might be a little better or not, about the same overall. But the senior's worse at pass block power and by a lot. But he is a little bit better at pass block finesse. Run blocking, he's better at. It's just his power. He's just not that. He's just not as strong. But I don't know. That might be one to keep an eye on. He's got a better impact block, too. So I don't know. If that right guard is struggling, if we're noticing that a lot, we might have to move on there. Uh, right tackle, we got a junior here. He's 72 overall. Backed up by some three senior redshirts. So. Yeah, we're going to be losing some uh, offensive line pretty soon. I mean, of course, by the time we're in year two and three, we'll probably have a, a lot of our own guys here. I'm not exactly sure how you even pronounce that first name. You're just going to be called Knox, man. Six, seven, 311 pounds. I don't want to butcher that name. I don't. <laughs> it whoop my ass. But uh, <laughs> we got Brandon Buckner, D end here, junior red shirt. Got a couple of these guys down here. We got a right in here, Ralph Mincy, senior. Followed by a junior redshirt, followed by a shit ton of freshmen on the D-line. So, DN we might not be too concerned with because, you know, these guys can interchange here on the left and right side. So, maybe we'll see how that ends up working out. But, boy, did they recruit a lot of DNs this last go-around. My goodness, a bunch of them. 
Uh, then we got Demonte Smith here, starting defensive tackle, junior redshirt. So we might be okay here at D-tackle. Might not be the biggest uh, issue right now. We got Sha'Kai Woods, Felix uh, Hickson down here as well. So not bad at all. I like it. Uh, pass rusher looks like we're going to need another outside linebacker. This whole left outside linebacker class is leaving. Drew Francis out of Knoxville. Looks like we're losing all linebackers across the board. My gosh. That's fine. If that's going to happen, because honestly, you guys don't have the greatest speed either. So, I mean, hey, we having to do the entire linebacker room. Not the end of the world. Right outside linebacker got a couple junior red shirts. If they want to leave, they probably could <laughs> as well at the end of the year. Okay, cornerback class pretty pretty heavy um, on the older guys as well. Three seniors here. Although, not bad overalls for uh, even some of the backup guys. We got uh, James Mons the third, 91-94. James might actually play. Legit, right? He might play ahead of some of these guys. We might have him in that nickel. So, let him see what he can do. Do his thing. You know, let's see. We got a 73-man, 63 zone, which isn't the worst. He's dead on the same with uh, James Shelman here. So, you know, I honestly might not be the end of the world to put James up there and let him get some action. He's also our fastest corner as well. So, not bad there. We got our... Uh, <laughs> We got a senior red shirt here across the board on fresh. Oh, I mean, I'm free safety as well. So outside Ricky Smith, but yeah, we, I guess we'll see how we end up uh, going about things. But yeah, it's a defense looks like it needs a pretty strong overhaul. We're also going to be losing a uh, strong safety as well in uh, Brendan Harris. So yeah, we we'll have to see how this all ends up working out. Uh, we do have a kicker, so Justice Chadwick will be taking over when uh, Zeke Reagan ends up leaving. So, Perfectly fine. And it looks like we also have a punter ready to take over. So, looks like we don't have to really necessarily worry about the uh, special teams right away. If we notice they're not doing their job, then, hey, we'll move on. But, all right, I like it. Let's get into the other stuff. And we also got guys we can red shirt to. So, we'll go ahead and throw Roman on the uh, red shirt. We got a running back. You know, if you're a freshman, you're more than likely not playing. Um, I guess we'll leave him. Fairview, Tennessee. But yeah, the freshman guys, most of y'all, y'all gonna get red shirted. Not gonna be playing more like that all this year. Uh, let's tackle. Yeah, why not? All right, cool. So we got the red shirts taken care of. And now it's time to hop into everybody's favorite part of everything when it comes to Dynasty and why everybody wanted back so much the recruiting. Now, I have had a little bit of time with recruiting with um, the one, the stream series that we're doing. And yeah, it's it's interesting to see how it ends up playing out. So I'm curious how this all gonna go down. Um, we can worry about, we can kind of look at other stuff and go through pipelines. We can go based off recommended. We can just do the whole any state, you know, just to kind of see who are the top prospects. It looks like the number one guy is a running back out of Louisiana. So actually we could even have a shot at him, but I, I know we're not getting any top prospects like that. <laughs> I'm not even gonna worry about some of these four and five stars off rip. Uh, you know, if we see some guys lingering around, maybe, maybe we consider it. Uh, we do have a pipeline guy here, but he looks like he really wants to stay in Florida. UCF, Florida State, and the Gators being his top three schools there. Then we've got Auburn and Georgia. I guess it doesn't want anything to do with Miami. But yeah, we'll slowly go through the board here. Looks like the top quarterback need they got for us is a one star. So, I guess we'll see, you know, if there's anybody here. It looks like the best I'm seeing is two star right now for us. And not the most favorable thing i mean we'll take a look at some guys we got a juco junior out here marvin and i don't i don't think that's one we're gonna end up uh taking a look at we got matt Calais, uh, Callis, maybe see maybe what he's talking about and actually just noticed this dude's last name was christmas all right max christmas but uh yeah probably uh, that's a one star i'm not really too concerned about the one star. i feel like we can get some more decent a little better than that if we can. Um, maybe throw these guys on here. These three stars just to kind of get a look at. Proximity to home is a B minus. I mean, we're not going to be able to move. So, <laughs> Jameson will, will always be there. But it looks like he's probably going to want to stay home. Um, got UCF, Clemson, Florida, Georgia, Alabama. It's going to be some tough teams to compete with on the three star. But, hey, maybe they're overlooking them. You know, those schools are really going after the four and five star prospects. All right, we'll move on to running back, which we have as a need. Emmett Walters, who is out of Tennessee. Got Vanderbilt as his number one place to go. Must be smart. You're trying to go down to Vandy, man. You got to have the brains for it. 
Um, he's an elusive back. You know, we'll throw him on here just to kind of get an idea what he might be. We got a three-star back. Really wants to go to UT and Juan Hare. He's out of Memphis. He doesn't even have Memphis on his list. Dang. Wants nothing to do. He's, he's trying to get out of there. He said, I want nothing to do with being here in Memphis. We do have a four-star prospect that's interested in us. Now, that's crazy. I'm throwing him on the list. He'll definitely be one we are looking to go ahead and get scouted. And we got another three-star back here as well. Fullback, not really concerned. I don't even know if we're going to even be needing a fullback, really, throughout this time. All right, we can work on Bob Miller's forte now with the wide receiver class here. And we'll see what we got. We got some two-star prospects that are that have us number one on their list. And you know what? We'll, since they're number one, we'll throw them on there. Um, we do have a three-star down here, though. With uh, DeMar Pitts, proximity to home. It's an A+. Plus, so, I mean, he's clearly from Murfreesboro. <laughs> So it looks like he might want to stay home. UT looks like to be the destination he wants to go. He's a 5'9 route runner. So I guess we'll see how that ends up shaking out for us. But Blah. yeah, interested to see how all this ends up shaking out with this uh, draft class. We got a three star prospect that's interested. Hey, not bad. Possession receiver out of Louisville. Might as well throw him on the list. Tight end is not a need for us, but hey, it's a three star. I'm not going to, you know, dive too much in here to these, but. Hey, you never know. Might be able to just find and find some gems here. We got another three-star down here. He's 6'6". Dang. Out of Kentucky. That might be one to... We got a 6'5 guy, too. Coach Prestige. In fact, if we're a B coach... How, wait, how are we a B Prestige? <laughs> we just started. But uh, I'm pretty sure that thing was like C-, minus too, when it, when it clicks in. I don't know. That might be incorrect, but... Oh, uh, yeah, you know, we can throw this DeMarcus Fuller dude on here. He's a vertical threat, 6'6". Six, six, maybe, you know, gets lost in the wayside. All right, as we go through these uh, offensive uh, tackles here, we're going to throw all the two stars that we got on here. Might as well. Hey, we need everything we can get. We've got a 6'7 guy out here. Agile, too. All right, number with the feet. You know, the 301 pounds. I see it. Um, Got Amani Glennon. Like I said, the two stars, we might as well go after him. Uh, we got some other guys down here. Oh, we got a three-star down here that's interested as well. Let's go. Deion Pepper, 6'5", out of Arkansas. Arkansas State looks to be the number one influence. But, hey, maybe, you know, we can creep up here a little bit. Um, and we got some other three-stars down here. Why not throw these guys on here as well? Um, guard does not seem as, you know, at too kind to us as well. We do got four stars up here that are open. Whether we go after them or not, I don't know. I mean, we might throw a couple on here just to see if we can kind of stick in there. If not, then, you know, we'll see how that ends up shaking out. But, yeah, probably going to throw every single two-star, like, almost a lot that we got on here. But we do got a three-star on here we're going to have to push for uh, with uh, Dan Carswell. So, proximity to home, we're perfect there. And he's out of Murfreesboro. So, let's get it. All right, everybody. So, we got the board set. actually got 35 targets. Normally, I don't feel like I ever get to that many. At least on the old games, like a lot of times I can feel like, okay, yeah, you know, narrow down to where you want to go. So, I mean, we do got some guys that are on here that we're probably not going to be able to get. But uh, I don't even have everybody I want to go through either. So, I don't know. We might want to cut down somewhere, you know, if we realize, yeah, we like, if we're just looking at it, we're like, yeah, maybe not. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, we know everybody's not going to stay on here. So, uh, but this is a quarterback, Matt Kalis. Looks like 86 speed, not bad. 82 throw power. Well, I feel like we're not getting anything out of this scouting, though. Sheesh. 40%. I got three. I don't know how far you got. I guess we're only getting 20% each time. Damn. We are having to use a lot of points, then. Uh, okay. Accuracy's okay. Short accuracy looks like it's going to be pretty fine. I guess. Uh, do we go? Well, you know, I think we'll leave it at 60. I think we got a, quite, a, quite a bit of details there. 82 throw power. It's nothing crazy. Now, he is an athlete. He's a two-star, too. So, that's, you know, not the end of the world. Oh, uh, quarterback here, Angel uh, Simmonson. Who is who are we fighting with? Oh my gosh, all the big dogs. Sheesh. Um, 75 speed, not necessarily what I'm looking for, but you know what? Honestly, that's enough for me to be like, you know what? Yeah, I, I want I want something a little better than that. But right now, we kind of need to keep looking at stuff. So, what did we get? Really, y'all gave us a mental, bruh. I need more than that. Come on, throwing the run agility. All right, well, all right, we'll go one more on him. Throw power, okay, yeah, he, he's gone. I should have removed him from the jump. All right, we got Jameson. Jameson, what you gonna work with? 79 speed, okay, a little bit better than the last dude. 85 agility. Awareness on the pressure, not bad. Throw power and deep accuracy might be pretty well. 
84 throw power. Okay. Deep is an 81. Short accuracy 80. Yeah, we'll leave Jane on. Look, we'll he's still got him on. Oh, he's a bust. Ooh. Huh. <sighs> Mobile Dead Eye. So he does have that. He's got Road Dog as well. Honestly, he doesn't look that bad. I'm going to leave him here for now. We'll see. Maybe. Oh, he's actually. Well, these two. Then shoot. Do we fully scout? You know what? Let's just fully scout him out then, too. Sheesh. I mean, of the two here, Ismail is definitely better than what we have with Matt. But However, with Matt, we are on the top five. And this is also a Juco guy. So, we might not have a chance. With Matt, we at least will be able to possibly have something. He's also got good speed, 86, 86. So, not bad at all for Matt with the speed-wise. So, you know what? We'll throw, we'll probably, yeah, we'll throw on the scholarship, why not? We'll see if we can hop up here and get in there with Georgia Southern. As well, um, we got Emmett Walters. Let's go to let's go to Vandy. Let's go to potential Georgia Tech schools that run the ball. We'll see what we got out of here with the running back position. We got quite a bit of running backs on here for what it looks like. So, so let's take a look. I uh, got a breakdown there. Looks like we might have really good speed. That speed is in the high end. I like seeing that 73 break tackle. Okay, 91. So acceleration might be around at 90, 89 range. Um, uh, honestly. Let's go one more. Let's see what we get out of here. We got agility spin move. Okay. I'll leave it there. I don't think we need any more on him. Honestly, it's not too bad for a two-star. Okay, 89 acceleration. Juan here. He's an elusive back fan favorite. It's fine. Ball carry vision 75. Um, we'll go one more. See if we can get that speed. We don't get the speed. All right. Well, we'll leave it there for now. I do want to get some. I mean, we're already running low on points here pretty quick. So, somebody's got, oh, this is a four-star, dude. We're, we're ninth on this dude list. I don't know why we're even ninth on this dude list. Maybe maybe he's just not being recruited heavily. I don't know. But we'll see what we got out of him. I mean, this might be a guy that's worth pursuing all the way. Uh, you know, let's just fully scout him. It's 80%, change of direction, acceleration. You know, I think we got a good idea. And mentals and stuff, okay. Yeah, throw in the scholarship as well. Man, we are... Yeah, I probably botched this, honestly, of how uh, going about about the scouting and whatnot. But it's still early on. We know early on scouting is going to be going to take a minute. We got 90 acceleration out of Floyd Tyree. All right. Where are we at on his top 10, I guess? I don't know. Yeah, I think we're sitting dead at 10. Carrying is not the best. It's a receiving back. I think we'll leave it there for now. All right, we got wide receiver. This is where we do have a little more. Yeah, that's that's huge. 79 speed. I don't need to see any more of that. <laughs> yeah, upgrading that stuff is early on is pretty damn important. Sweet G's. All right, let's see what we got here. Catching traffic. Okay, a king. Let's get one more. 86 acceleration. Not going to be the fastest guy in the world, but we'll leave him be for now. Yeah, right, John. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna let you walk, John. We'll, 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 we'll go another direction. All right, Demar Pitts, three star. Dang, forty percent. That's all we got. <laughs> I thought we got more than that. All right, well, let's get into an eighty percent. Okay, not bad out of Demar. I like it. Um, we know we're gonna be battling potential with UT, so I guess we'll go ahead and slide him the scholarship. Um, we got tight ends up next. Got a couple guys here. We got some three star prospects. This dude, we are six on, so. Maybe we get some good stuff out of here. I'm definitely not a run blocker. Is this the six? No, no, it's not like the six seven guy, whatever he was. Okay, eighty percent short route agility and awareness. We're not really worried about those. Okay, not bad. I don't know. That that might not be one where we're that interested in. All right, let's see what Demarcus is about. Okay, six six. That's what he is. His is just open. I think that's that's why we were looking at him. His was just open. All right, 83 speed, nothing crazy. Honestly, I'm really not overly impressed with this guy either. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it be. We'll just we'll leave him on the board. We'll see how it goes. Offensive line, this is really what we need to kind of be probably putting our efforts towards because it's pretty pretty brutal. And you know we're running out of time with hours. I'm mean, heck, we haven't even got to the defensive side of the ball, and there's some good defensive stuff over here too. So yeah, this is this is gonna be a stressful first year. Especially because we literally need linebackers, too. Honestly, I probably should have started going through some of the three-star guys first. <laughs> Maybe then uh, some of the other two-stars. But, I mean, this is just how this is going to have to go, man. Sheesh. 
Yeah, this Dexter dude might not be terrible though. Where are we at on here? We're fifth. Okay. Who? Kentucky, man. I feel like Kentucky's not gonna be always oh, a Juco. I feel like Kentucky might not be pursuing a, a two star too heavily. Yeah, 65 blocking, 65 pass block power, impacts a 75. Might be a decent stream. But yeah, you gotta let me know who you guys have played a little bit more. I mean, I, I plan on this being kind of a learning thing anyway for me. So yeah, we're already out of time. We're down to five hours already. Well, uh, do we want to throw a scholarship to somebody we weren't really sure on? I guess we threw him at you know the four and five star guys. But All right, okay, well, we already gave this dude one. Uh, give this guy one. Why not? Give it to Torrance. All right. Well, yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see, I guess, how that is going to end up being. Uh, we also have custom schedules. I'm not going to mess with anything here. So, first game is FCS. The Ole Miss Week 2. My gosh. Got a bye week in Week 6 and 12. So, all right. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, hopefully this is a, a good year for us. And we'll see how it all ends up shaking out here. But yeah, Let's go ahead and advance this week on. Get through the preseason. Let's see how things are kind of moving with, with uh, some of the guys we got on the board. And... Looks like we have already kind of been, looks like, locked out of some guys, which, hey, understandable. You know, I'm not going to be able to be in here with everybody, but, ooh. Torrance, we do move up to number one for us. So, I like seeing that. Three-star recruit already. Okay, moved up number one. Hopefully, we can push our way away from guys like Kentucky. You know, some powerhouse. Uh, no, 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 no. Powerhouse and basketball. Let me let me go with that. <laughs> let me move from the powerhouse and basketball. Northwest and the Marshall. Hopefully, we can move Move off from some of those guys, and we'll see how that ends up working out for us. And then we got Emmett Walters, who we didn't drop on, but he has reached his top eight. But Memphis has offered him a scholarship, so that might not be the best for us there with that running back. But I guess we'll see how recruiting is for um, the rest of these guys, see where we're at, see if we're making moves or not. And we are making the moves on Matt Kalis. He does have offers, though, from everybody else. So that is part of that. Um have to see how this ends up going. Where we're gonna go with the pitches, athletic facilities, coach stability. He's cool about, and so is proximity to home. So that does work for us there. So like to see that. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of hours. Well, we don't have a lot of hours actually. I should say we still got guys we want to recruit and scout out. So yeah, we're this first year is gonna be it's gonna be tough. Uh, looks like Jameson. There's nothing going on here so far with him. So and we do have a fully scouted. I mean. He's a Juco Jr., so I don't, uh, I, I just don't know about him. I feel like Kalis might be a better guy just to go after, but this one, we might not be able to snag him. Jo Georgia Southern got a pretty solid lead down on him. He's close, and he's big on being proximity to home, so with Georgia being right there, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see but as we go through this, but I'm going to go through this and see how uh, everything ends up shaking out. All right, you guys, so we got the recruiting board kind of all figured out. Uh, we got all the scouting done as well. Right now, we currently have 24 prospects, so we're going to go through here, and uh, I'll go through the individual guys, so as we've kind of added some people, too, so we had to use about 400 hours. Don't have everybody fully scouted how we would like, but that'll all be good. Um, right now, we do have um, two quarterbacks, Matt Kalis and uh, Jameson Ismail, so I've read Jameson's definitely looking like the more accurate quarterback. Deep accuracy being an 81, 70, 80, uh, 78 for medium. And then short accuracy is an 80, whereas Matt is 73 medium, short accuracy 74. Uh, looks like we don't even have deep ball or whatever. So, but Matt is a little better with the, when it comes to the speed. So I'm going to keep uh, my eye on both these guys now. This is a Juco Jr. So Jameson, uh, maybe not the... The uh, guy that's going to be here for the long term. Then we do have a couple running backs up here. We got Juan Hare, who um, we'll take a look at. Yeah, so nobody going at the one at the moment. We do have Deshaun. He's a four-star. This one's going to be a tough one to probably stay in the running four. We'll have to see how it ends up working out. Considering we don't have any hours left, that might put us behind the eight ball. We're probably going to end up losing out on him. But we still got Jawan here. Hopefully, you know, um, we don't actually, shoot, we don't even have anything going for him, so... Hopefully nothing ends up happening. Maybe next week we can kind of start getting in some stuff with uh, some of these prospects. Uh, no fullbacks, wide receivers. We only got a couple guys up here. Uh, Demar Pitts is the one I'm most interested in of the uh, of the two guys. He's a, he's a three star right now. We are number one on him. I'm only 80% scouted, but it's route running and catching. I'm not really overly concerned about it. 
So I think we'll be good there. We can fully scout him out when uh, we need to. So, but we did just give him the. Uh, we we already have the scholarship to him, but we don't have anything else going for us just yet. But once we get more hours and everything, we should be good to go there. But um, and then uh, Akeem, right now we are sitting number one on him. Once again, a guy we don't have fully scouted out yet, but. You know, and I'm not. I'm guessing he's not gonna be the fastest guy either. He's only a two-star prospect, so can't expect too much. We've got a couple of tight end prospects here, and uh, right now Tyreek Torrance is a three-star. They're both three stars, but right now Tyreek, we are sitting number one on, and looking pretty nice. Can't complain there. Moving up in front of Kentucky Northwestern and Marshall, and then Demarcus is the one who has the big boys after him. But I don't know. We'll have to. Once again, when we get more points, we'll help hopefully have an idea of what we can look at. Um, I had to pretty much cut our entire thing here with the uh, offensive lineman. And even this guy, I don't even know if we're going to be able to uh, stick with this. We don't even have a scholarship after Dexter right now. So we might even have to drop him off and then go look at other offensive tackles. Because right now, we really just don't have anybody we're going after. But hopefully we can kind of stick in this race a little bit. It's just, it is just Marshall, but it's Louisville. That being the other team could be, could throw a wrench into the thing. Uh, offensive guard. Um, we got Earl Ramsey up here. We did just offer him, so I'm hoping we can maybe get into the mix with this. We're Appalachian State in Memphis. We'll see how that is. Um, is from Knoxville, don't have any center prospects yet. Like I said, we're going to have to go through all this. We do have John Robledo. Um, we're going to see if we can maybe get into the mix with this. He's a three-star D end. Nobody right now going after him. He's actually considered a bust. So maybe this ends up going in our favor. We don't we we'll have to wait and see. I mean, he's not that bad. He's 70 across, like, 70 is, like, pretty much across the board. He's not the strongest, which may be why he's being li listed as a bust. 6'4", 294, not the biggest guy either. So, uh, defensive tackle, Quentin Rose. Right now, we have the only offer out for him. He's a three-star. He's also a gym. So, I'm hoping maybe this is a, a sneaky guy we can get. 88 strength, 80 finesse moves. I like it, and he's pretty quick for a defensive tackle. Honestly, he probably could even bump outside to DN with the 80 finesse moves. I mean, 6'2", 280, that's a little light in the ass right there if you ask me for a defensive tackle. So, we'll see. He's actually 27th in his position and 19th in the state. So, yeah, we'll see if we can uh, maybe find a Jimmy Quentin Rose. I don't know, man. We got he's, He wants to go to some top schools, and they're definitely some, some big ones to, to deal with, especially dealing with a school like UT. Uh, that's not going to be easy. We got Johnny Wild, outside linebacker here. He's pretty much just like the defensive tackle prospect. That or recruit, I should say, not prospect. But yeah, they're kind of pretty similar what schools they want to go to. But yeah, pass rusher off the edge. See, maybe if we can find a way to get something here with Johnny as well. Uh, middle linebacker, we got a, some feelers out on some guys. Uh, got guys scouted, but these are the two main ones that we're going after, especially Tyler Schaefer. Um, 86 tackle, but he's got 82 speed, 87 acceleration. He's on coverage, 67, so a little bit of work to be had there. But right now, he doesn't have any intention coming to us. But never know. Nobody's going really going after him right now. So it looks like he wants to go to Georgia. Pretty stay, stay close to home -ish, So I don't know. We'll have to see if we can maybe find a way to sneak in there. If not, you know, we got some other guy, some feelers out here. Willie Barbers is another one. 88 speed. That's what I really like to see. 66 zone. Not, you know, nothing crazy. But tackle's not terrible either. 71 right now. 90. Acceleration too out of White House, Tennessee. So, man, we got some guys on here. I'm not, you know, not too uh, disappointed in. We got then we got Stephen Swift, another guy. Right now, he we're not on his list, but you know, we're going after some people. Uh, we got Rayshon Quarterman. He is a three-star prospect. We're sitting fifth. He's a bust. But honestly, at this point in time, we can't really run away from bust. 86 speed, 89 acceleration. Not the fastest guy, but he is 6'2", 198. That means he's a physical corner. We'll have to see. He's out of Nolansville, Tennessee. So, he's like 30 minutes away as well. So, you know, we'll hopefully see, you know, how all this ends up going down for us. Then we got some safeties who we haven't been able to really scout out just yet except Cam Kelly. So, got guys who haven't received offers yet. I'm hoping that ends up staying the case. I'm sure some of these four-star prospects are going to get looked at, though. And uh, we'll have to see how that ends up shaking out. But, yeah, recruiting class is... For week number one, uh, well, I guess I should say week zero is done. We'll get a move on. Hopefully, we get a little bit of an understanding of what we're going to be dealing with going here into week one. And we've been locked out of a D, of a two prospect. Yeah, area. He's he's already ready to move on from us. So I mean, right now, offensive tackle wise, we're we're pretty screwed. Um, looks like we have Matt Kalis in. Ooh, we are not really making any ground. But Temple really moved up. Like I said, we didn't use a lot of points on people. And yeah, okay. Cardell, yeah. The big schools have got in there. Florida State is there. 
Yeah, we'll have to move off for Deshaun. We, we, there's no way. We're not going to be able to fight with these guys. We're just, we're just not. A guy like Kalis, I don't know. We didn't move up really at all. We didn't put anything into him this week. So we do have 380 hours, so that should be a little more helpful. Maybe we can start trying to, you know, put something into him and maybe get a little bit. Uh, we'll see what's going on with Jamison here. Still nothing yet. Haven't had a chance to offer him a scholarship. We're going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, maybe put some here. Um, yeah, we'll DM the player. Why not we'll try and see if we can get into the race with some of these guys here. We'll also do the same with uh, Matt. Go ahead and DM the player. And maybe I think Temple is definitely putting in quite a bit. I mean, that influence jumped up a lot. So we'll see what uh, is going to end up happening out with the quarterback class. As Deshaun, yeah, I mean, we're, we're just not going to be able to compete at all. But thankfully, Jawan still has nothing going for him here. So... Um, we got acceleration speed. You know, honestly, I don't think we really need to know anything else. We're going to go ahead and offer him the scholarship. And uh, honestly, this week, we should be okay not to do anything just because the scholarship should give us a pretty good boost. And hopefully that jumps us up quite a bit and uh, maybe puts us ahead. Maybe they even puts us in first place. We'll have to see. Uh, if we got more points, we'll try and come back to some of the guys. But yeah, uh, we'll move on to wide receivers. Still sitting good on Akeem. All right, DeMar, um, we don't have any action for him, so we'll go ahead. And we'll put a couple of things in here. We'll do social media, and then we'll DM the player, and hopefully that ends up working out well. If we, once again, if we got leftover stuff, we'll fully go ahead and get all that done. Um, Akeem, yeah, at this moment, we'll just throw him the scholarship right now. We won't waste any more time with it. Uh, the tight ends, okay, it's not bad at all. We're still looking solid here, so... So again, another, we'll put another like 15 points into these guys. And I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and get through this. And then we'll see where we go from there. All right. So we're done with everything. Once again, we're going to kind of quickly try and go through everybody. I know heavy scouting, but kind of how, you know, a lot of these videos could end up going pretty heavy with the recruiting and whatnot. So my Kalis, we got a few points after him. So is Ismail. Ismail right now, no recruiting really going after him. Uh, Jawan Hare, same thing. We've got a scholarship now for him. So hopefully things end up going out well there. No. Um, Akeem, we gave him a scholarship. Uh, Pitts, we're gonna ask if we can put 15 points into him. So, hopefully, you know, we get some <clears throat> get some good stuff out of here. Demarcus Fuller, still no, don't know if we did we give a scholarship for him yet. We did. Okay, so yeah, we DM in the player with that one as well. Tyreek Torrance, hopefully, you know, we can make some uh, gain some ground on him as we start putting stuff in. Still don't have any offensive line prospects. I'll probably do that off screen here. Um, we got John uh, Robledo. This was a guy we ended up moving up on, and now we're trying to fight, see if we can get ahead of uh, Florida State and Miami. So we do have some points in him. Um, he's a three-star. He might be a bust. That's all good. We're going to send friends and family after him. So see if we can uh, try and lock in some of these three-star prospects, and maybe even some of these four-stars. Same with Quentin Rhodes. We're going to be sending the friends and family after him. John and Wiley. Like some of these three-star prospects that I know we're going to be fighting for, we're going to be doing that for him. So um, Tyler Schaefer, we're also doing the same thing. We're going to try and see if we can really go after some of these prospects and some of these other guys we're going to be a little less you know we're going to be sending like the social media well being the player social media will scour and all that good stuff and then quarterman um i know he ended up being a bust but still think he'll end up being fine man like i said not everybody's gonna end up being great got the scholarship to him got 15 points talking to him uh, steven swift we sent the scholarship uh we'll have to wait and uh fully get stuff done there um cam kelly is a four-star prospect he ended up actually being a bust but we got 15 points going after them, so we'll see if we can. And then these other two safeties, we actually found some gems here. So, Kerry Fontaine, who we ended up finding out, a 73 zone, 89 speed, and acceleration is a 91, so not bad. Can't really tackle worth the damn. And then we got Ahmad Drowich, a 72 zone coverage, 89 speed, and acceleration is a 90. And then his tackle is a 63, so definitely can tackle a little bit better than Kerry Fontaine there, but... No, not bad. And then uh, here we got Cam Kelly, 86, 90 uh, acceleration, and 79 zone, 70 tackles. I can tackle better than both of these guys, but he ended up being a bust. So, honestly, not really too mad at it, but especially if it allows us to, you know, get some four-star prospects in there. Then we got um, Nasir Artmore, and we also have uh, Dallas Con Cantu, or Cantu. And, uh, yeah, we got some guys, you know, we're going to be going after here that are, you know, a little bit maybe on the higher side, but, hey, you never know. It might end up working out in our favor. We'll see, but... And another thing, man, these guys, these teams could come in late and then they just swipe them away from us too late in the game. So we'll have to see how this ends up going out for us after our first game. And hopefully things end up going well. But I do have to look at some offensive linemen because we got nobody right now. Nobody wants to come here.
Tennessee and Johnny Red Floyd Stadium, home of the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. And Raider fans have been clamoring to get this one started all week. What an exciting matchup we have in store for you this afternoon, built around the pageantry, tradition, and everything that makes college football great. As we'll see, the Pandas taking on a team from Conference USA, the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth, as always, by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Guys, let's TV. All right, week number one is going to be underway here in the borough as we're going to be taking on the FCS Southeast team. And I have heard not good things versus these FCS schools, man. A lot of people are kind of struggling with them. But you know what? Hey, Bob Miller going out here, first time coaching here, and back at his alma mater. We'll see what he can do with this school, and hopefully things end up going well for us here in this first game as should be a favorable matchup for us. We actually have a stadium post. Not sure how we have one with very, very little bit of a crowd. But, hey, I guess the, the Burrow faithful are rocking here early on. And, oh, boy, we are getting torched early. He had another man wide open, and it's a first play. FCS is trying to score. They're going to it. The one play touchdown. Wow, not what we were looking for to start off at the Blue Raiders uh, dynasty. And that franchise is not considered a franchise. Wow, yeah. yeah that, that's, that's not what we want to see versus a team that's kind of a bottom feeder. <laughs> Legit. Oh, boy. Starting down 7 though, man. That is not what we were looking for. Got a deep kick into the end zone. I guess we'll come out. Uh, the little bit I have done returning, yeah, you kind of struggle to get back to the to the 20, I feel like, a lot of times. Yeah, again, if anything, you can get to the 25. That's really where you will need to be because that's a touchback. So, Guess we'll see uh, how things end up shaking out, but I will actually be rocking with coach suggestions here just because, you know, kind of make it a little bit tougher and whatnot. We are on Hall of Fame difficulty, so that's not going anywhere. But, uh, yeah, we're going to drop back the pass. We're going to go ahead and hit the flat route here to start off early on. It's Peasant making a man miss. Peasant going all the way down for a big game to start off, and FCS already dealing with a bit of an injury here, and we'll pick up an early first down up to the 36. Pretty big play to start off. And currently, I am rocking with MTSU's playbooks, both of them, offense and defense. I, that might end up changing a little down the line as we get a move on as we hit a big pass play over the middle. It's another injury for FCS. Boy, they are injured left and right. I noticed that when I was playing Road to Glory 2. Like anytime you play these FCS schools, like they get hurt like every other play. It's kind of odd how often they do end up going down. It's really, really... Really concerning, like how often they get hurt. It's like, damn, is it because of the step up in talent, or well, y'all injury is, in, uh, rating is just that poor? We're gonna give our first run of the day, and peasant trying to make something happen here. He's gonna pick up a good gain of eight, though. All right, Frank. I right, got a third and two coming up. Looking to see if we can find a way to pick it up. Peasant will go in motion, back to throw, looking downfield, trying to hit his man and laying out for it. Here's our wide receiver making a nice diving grab. Able to get the job done there. Makes it a first down in goal. And Valtiato making a nice throw there. Able to help. Peasant trying to find a way to stick it into the end zone. He's going to get down to the two. And we'll see if we can find a way to strike here. Still can't believe we gave up a touchdown on the very first play of the game. That is not how you want to start off the season. But all good. We're going to get a jet pass here, getting to the outside, and we're easily going to get into the end zone there. I'm kind of surprised the stadium's shaking a little bit there. But, hey, we into the end zone for the score here early on. You love to see it. And the extra point is up and good, and we are good to go here. Seven play, 82 yards, 209 off the clock. Now, for you guys that are playing this game or for your first time y'all played it, how do y'all like the kicking stuff, and how y'all enjoying the game in general? I know a lot of people are having fun. I know a lot of my friend group, man. We are, we're having a ball playing it. There are some issues here. I mean, look, it's an EA game. We we know they're going to be issues. So, But for the most part, hey, it, it brought fun back. For the, like, legit. It feels like, you know, being a kid again and whatnot. So I, I'm really having a great time playing it. Like, my boys having updates with their road to glory. Oh, balls on the ground. Balls on the ground. And they got it back. And another injury, man. We've seen, like, six injuries already. It's their offensive alignment now. But, yeah, man, it really feels good. It feels like being a kid again and whatnot. So, oh, uh, yeah, I'm glad, you know, I'm happy. I know there were some people that were a little upset that people, you know, took off work and stuff like that. Like, who cares? If it's their time, if they if they have PTO built up, who cares? Like, you know, people can use their day whatever on whatever they want to. Some people use it to, to just get a chill day. Some people need a mental health day. That's perfectly fine, man. 
and this is your mental health. Hey, it's a great break for it. Video games, you know, hey, it changed a lot of people's lives, especially since this game has came last came out. But anyway, back to throw here, and they're gonna find a man for the first down. Uh, cornerback needs you to step up and be a little bit better with that one. Here we go. We got a first and ten situation here. Looks like they're gonna go back to the ground here and trying to find his way to cut up field. He's gonna pick up a gain of five. Tell you one thing, tackling is definitely a lot harder. I know they kind of like pretty much got rid of like the little tackle box and whatnot to kind of make it harder. Just not oh, you can just warp up to somebody and make the tackle. And basically playing Madden and whatnot all these years, not having that is definitely making it a lot harder. I mean, you don't just warp to somebody in real life. I mean, it is realistic that way. I just don't like because I'm not used to it. <laughs> So that's kind of my thing about it, but oh good, hey, you know, it's just another learning curve. This game has been a big learning curve so far to start, and it's going to start with a nice pick here. We're able to read it all the way out of the flat, and that's a first down inside the 35. We're getting our first takeaway here of the season, our first user, and we're going to start this one off nicely. Yes, sir, yeah, you went from a one-play score touchdown, no, 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 no. Now it's time for the pick, baby. Your lady we couldn't house call that one. But all good. Brings the offense back on on the field. And my goodness, brothers, they have a lot of motion out of this playbook. It is unreal. All right, well, we'll send Stewart in motion. He's the one who scored the touchdown early on the jet sweep. He's going to see a lot of that, apparently. And, uh, ooh, that ball's underthrown. It got through. Oh, Stewart can't hang on. Had it and then lost it. Oh, my goodness. Kellen, I thought you were going to be able to put us inside a first down and goal there. All right, third and five here after the turnover. We'll see if we can find a way to... Pick up a first down here. Looking downfield. It's not much open at all. Trying to go to the flat. Can't get rid of the ball. And we are sacked. That is an awful sack right there. Brody Wilkerson brings us down. That is not at all what we needed or were looking for. We'll have to send this one away. We'll see if we can pin them. And actually, not the worst punt. Got a fair catch down there at the 15-yard line. And they will take over. So not able at all to take advantage of the interception. Back out is the FCS Pandas, and this is going to be a run play up the middle. He'll pick up a gain of five. Yeah, run defense has definitely been been sketchy so far. I mean, I'm not coming out here to try to, oh, let's break the game with, you know, run blitz beaters and nanos and all that type of stuff. Y'all know how we are. You know, we try to keep it realistic. And, uh-oh, got to get back. Oh, he's going to dump it off underneath. I feel like we did a good job getting back on that right side because I feel like we were definitely about to get hit over top. But, thankfully, nothing there. It's going to bring up a third down and one here. We'll see if we can get off the field. Come on, defense. We need it. Let's get off here. And, oh, uh, we got a, a motion to the right side. Is it going to be a run play? Oh, they run it to the left. Great. Great play, go. Great play. I for sure didn't think they would run to the weak side of the motion. And so, oh, it's, a, oh, it's a read option here, and they have a lot of room to work with. Big hit right there on the quarterback. No fumble or anything, but he will be a big first down. FCS on the move again. They're in our territory. And we are on the rope. They're going to the ground game quite a bit here. They're not going to the ground. They're probably looking for a quick pass here. Second and five, another read option here. And, boy, they are running the read option quite a bit. Thankfully, we're able to shut that one down pretty well here. And quarterback a little slow to get up. Now, old games. Madden and whatnot. The guy was slow to get up. You knew there wasn't nothing wrong with him. Now, that might actually mean something. They might actually be dealing with some of that wear and tear. As they go read option again, pick up the first down as the running back. And that is a first down and 10 again for these guys. They're sticking to the ground. They're, they want nothing to do with passing the ball. They literally want nothing to do with it. They do, do through the pick. And they say, like, all right, you know what? Nope, we're just going to stick to the ground. And it's being efficient. They're going to save them. Will they go to the ground yet again? Or will they finally go to the air? They're finally going to the air here. And they're going to dump it down to the running back. I don't know what happened to my... Tim, what, Francis, what were you doing there? He just kind of like stopped behind him. He's just like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to watch him catch this ball. I'm not going to put up a fight at all or nothing. All right, first attempt again. They'll go back to the air here and over the head. And it is a touchdown once again for the Pandas. They aren't joking, man. These teams aren't necessarily that much of a cakewalk, man. They are not. Defense, though, on this game is a struggle. That is for sure. It is a big struggle. Like, it's, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's way more difficult than it is on Madden. All right, let's see what we can do back here out on offense. Oh, he had him beat, and then he got, he got bumped. Man, y'all got to see that. 
If y'all didn't see it live, man, it, he, he got him beat. And then what What was this? Like, what happened here? He just like, oh, no, no. Oh, he, he's like, okay, I'm about to blow by him. And then, nope. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to get him again. And then the ball just was not thrown the best. All right, we got a third down and long, man. Sheesh. You guys got to find a way to pick it up. Trying to step up in the pocket. Looking downfield and running out of time, man. We probably should have just took off instead. It is a three and out. We are looking not good at all here in the first game of the season. We look like we have not played before. We got to get something figured out. We need another turnover, apparently. Even though we literally did nothing with that turnover. Except give them the ball right back. Second and ten. We got to watch that read option. And there it is. Quarterback's got it. And we're all over it. Yes, sir. Third down and 12 coming up. Make them throw the ball. Apparently, it's going to have to be the name of this game. Make sure we contain that quarterback, too. Keep him in that pocket. Here we go. Third and 12. Can't let him get it, y'all. And he's looking downfield. And down he goes. We're getting our first sack of the season. Bringing him down is our defensive tackle getting home. I'm not exactly sure which one it was, but I think I saw 98, the one. Been the one shown there. And it is Sha'Kai Woods bringing him down, number 98. Got him, hit him with the bull rush. Tried to pump fake and just able to wrestle him down to the ground. All right, first and 10. We can't have no three and out here. I think we can actually run the ball pretty well on these guys. Got to stop. Going to the air as much. I mean, this is an air raid, like, offense so that they have. I probably won't. I don't think I'm going to end up sticking with this playbook or just play style. So, you know, we'll see how it is. I just kind of wanted to see how uh, MT would be. So, right now, we're not necessarily recruiting. Right now, we're recruiting to get players in here. Not necessarily trying to fit them to a specific scheme yet. Here we go. First and 10. Got two seconds here right before the two-minute warning here, which was news to me. I completely, like, either, I don't know if I just forgot about it or what. I was like, a two-minute warning? I said, what's this? What did college have a two-minute warning? I, and it wasn't just me. A lot of my friends were like, wait, what? <laughs> so it's not like, you know, just something that was like, oh, I think this is the first year they're trying it out. So I know when they have injuries, though, sometimes under the two-minute warning, they don't lose a timeout. And then other times I have seen it lost. So I don't know if college is doing timeouts at the two-minute or not. If not, they need to because that's that can be easily like exploited. Easily. So I my guess is it's like the NFL and they will be timeouts after. But if y'all know that, let me know. Because I have seen both. I've seen it where they do take the timeout away and then I've seen it where they don't. So I don't know. But here we go. First and ten. We're knocking on the door here. We're in. It's about to be first down and goal. And we got a wide open man. We missed fire on the throw. And it looks like he may even got held up a little bit there as well on that. So that's going to make up a second down and 10 now here with a minute 30 left. And they're coming out with an all-out blitz here. That is one thing I've noticed. They love the blitz, but it's going to bring up a third down and one. Knocking on that door, trying to find a way to punch this into the end zone to get this game tied. Of all things, who would have thought we'd be trying to tie this game up and actually trying to blow these guys out? Uh, going to drain a little bit of clock here, probably snap it at like the one-minute mark. See, we're going to take some time down. Who, Once again, who would have thought we even need to say that versus this team? But apparently this might be more of a dog fight than we realize. So, yeah. Let's try and see if we can uh, knock this one into the end zone here. We're going with the trap, trying to get the run play in there. It's going to put us down to the one with a minute left here. All right, here we go. First down and goal. Going to snap it here with one second left. Peasant not going to be able to make it. Got 20 seconds left here. He's going to go ahead and get up here to the line. Not going to end up uh, trying to call a timeout or anything. So, that just ends up being like the final play here. We'll see. Trying to take off here. Uh, it's not much open. Still not much open. Got to throw it. Oh, my gosh. That was a disaster. We probably could have got it to the running back there at the last second. They only given us two plays. All right, then. Well, third down to go from the one now. Yeah, no, we're not doing a good job uh, with trying to get here into this end zone. This defense is really tightened up down here. Here we go, trying to make sure we don't F it up. And we're in there to the end zone yet again. That is our uh, slot receiver able to get there one more time. Able to get his second touchdown grab of the day. This time an actual, like, legit route downfield. <laughs> and we'll take it here with four seconds left. Kellen Stewart. I couldn't remember. Honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning these guys' names. We'll learn it more as the season goes along. But, uh, yeah, hey, we'll take it. We'll tie it up. Going here into halftime, hopefully, is you know, this kick meter is a little bit different. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Guys, who's got a better seat there in Murfreesboro than you do? A captivating game so far. 
an entertaining first half, and we've got a multi-possession lead to break down thanks to the surgical precision of this offense. Might honestly take more time to talk about what didn't work than what did. The running game, the passing game, gadget plays have worked. Now it's just a matter of finishing the job. And with that, let's send it back to the guys at Floyd Stadium. I don't know, did, was it me or did he say a multi-score lead? Man, this game tied up. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, we're going to leave that one in the end zone. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, Stewart. Sweet, G. You did not just jump up there to go catch that ball. <laughs> Bro, I'm, I am sick. I can't believe it. <laughs> All right, well, first down and 10. We'll see how we start off the second half. Hopefully a lot better than our first half defensively. We allowed them to score a couple of times there. We need to make sure we're we shutting these type of teams down, man. If that's the case, when we get into conference play or any big teams, I think we do have a bigger game in week two. And TSU sometimes gets into some bigger team schedules and whatnot. So, see how that ends up uh, shaking out for us and whatnot. But first time in the pistol formation here. We've got a uh, tight end in motion here. He's going to kind of run to the right and then cuts back. And then Peasant going to find a lane here. Peasant making a man miss. Peasant picking up a big first down inside FCS territory. That's going to put us down to inside the 45 to the 41. Second to 10 after the drop. Going over the middle. Got a man. It's Kelly. Turning it up to the 10. Down inside. for well, first down and goal to the 7 or the 8. And a big time pass play hit it as he was cutting over and able to strike. And we're looking to take our first lead of the game here. First down and goal. Peasant back in the game in the backfield. Hand off to him. And Peasant is going to find the end zone. And the Blue Raiders get their first lead of the season here. We actually got quite a bit of a crowd on that side. Over there, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's more of the tourist campus side over there than the, than the other side. But you got kind of you know, more of your... Your season ticket holders with their luxury boxes and whatnot. Yeah, even small schools like this kind of have like a little luxury box. Nothing crazy, but yeah. We're into the end zone, though, and we will take our first lead of the year. All right, here we go. We know we're going to have to worry about this quarterback potential uh, read option game, but right now it's sending a man in motion. They are going to give it to the back. In the backfield, we are there, and that's going to be a loss of one on the play. Yes, sir. Defense hopefully stepping it up here in the second half. Myers ends up making the tackle for the loss. And to the airs, FCS, and oh, they might have a play. They do. Big hit. Hangs on to the football, but he has it. Not the best throw. Had to go down and get it. And boy, he really set up his receiver to fail right there. But the receiver still able to bail out the quarterback. First and 10, hand off to the outside. Coming up there, make a play. Can't get it. Flag on the play. We'll see what it's about. I'll tell you, we'll take the hole and call it out of back it up. Made a first down in 20 now. Good. Needed that because we do not need these guys moving the ball down the field on us. Come on, you guys. All right, well, let's see what they do here on second and 20. Don't mean they might not go back to the ground because they dang sure might. Oh, they run a screenplay. And we got to get there in time. And they're going to pick up a gain of eight. Decent game. Makes it a third down and manageable here. And we will see what they are about. That field goal kicker has a 91 kick power. Oh, my gosh. Who the hell gave him such a good leg? Dang. All right, then. Well, third down and 12 defense looking to get a stop here and get off the field. Back to throw. Quarterback looking to take off. He is going to take off. Will he get to the sticks? He's going to be just shy. They bring up a fourth down and four. Punting unit, punting unit coming out onto the field. And we will get the stop. You'll love to see it. Now, I bet not see no roughing the punter here or mess whatever y'all be doing. And there it goes. There it goes. I knew it was going to. I don't know which side it was going to be. And here it goes. They have to get that fixed. Until then, I think I'm going to end up cutting it off legit just because it's broke. It is clearly a glitch in this game. Like, they constantly do it on extra points, field goal attempts. Anytime you get a stop, here they come with this mess. Other than that, I got a fresh set of downs because of the idiotic play. And it will be another run play to the ground. And number 35, yet again, picks up a decent game, picks up three. We got to see what we can do here. Meyer still dealing with some wear and tear. I'm curious what he's dealing with. Can't really see it right there. And they're going to the... Yeah, it was picked off over the middle. Trying to find a way to bounce through. And Harris, he's going to take it all the way up the middle of the field. It is a pick six for the Blue Raiders. Brendan Harris, 73 yards for the score. And that'll put us up a couple possessions. Oh, oops, that was a nice call to timeout there. 
Actually ruined the highlight right there. <laughs> but, hey, it's a pick six for the senior safety. Able to get in the box and take it all the way up the middle of the field. Right down midfield and able to score it. You love to see it, Brendan Harris. Let's go, boys. It's going to put us up 28-14 here with a minute 35 left to go in the third. Well, we've got a couple picks on the day. Harris is actually now on fire about that. You love to see that. Uh, we got a little bit of a flip here. You know, if they're going to change stuff, I'm going to change my formation. And they're actually going to go to the ground. Woods try to make a big play again and a big hit coming across. Laying the hat down, laying the hammer. All right, actually, the whole defense looks to be a lot of the defensive players on fire. Myers, yeah. We might need to get Myers out of here. I don't want to see any more wear and tear popping up for him. And, oh, he's going down again. Getting home again. And Shakai Woods breaking the sack. Third and long coming up. As the third quarter is coming pretty close to an end here. Let's go. Shakai Woods busting it up yet again. Throwing. I don't know if that was the guard or center who he was on, but able to just rough him up. Great coverage downfield. Able to help lead us to that sack. And here we go. Let's see if we can get out the field here. Third down and 14. Setting up a screen. We can't get there in time. Need somebody to help come up make a play. He's going to be short. Fourth and inches coming up here. Wow. Oh, my goodness. They almost picked that up on the screen. We were just way too slow, and they are going to punt this one away. I bet not hit them this time, I'll tell you that. And that's going to end the third quarter here on this punt. Thankfully, they actually punted it and didn't take it to the fourth and then went and go end up going for it. But let's go. Good field position, and the Blue Raiders looking good here and in going into the fourth quarter over FCS, as we should. We should be dominating these guys. Let's be real. <laughs> But yeah, looking solid, looking solid. Time possession, but they are killing us. I know we've got a couple pick. Well, we got a pick six in this. So it takes away a possession. Still, regardless, they they really have they smoked us with time possession. They're running it more than we are too, though. All right, here we go. First down and ten. Man in motion. A little play action. Taking a shot down field, and we're not able to connect with the wide receiver. Hand off here, running back Peasant. Oh, Peasant making a man miss. Peasant picking up a first down, and we are inside their territory up to the 47-yard line. First and 10, we'll go back to the air again. Looking downfield, just going to come down here underneath. Try to see if something opened up down, deep downfield. No point trying to take that risk here. And we'll take the first down. Keeping the sticks moving, time ticking as well. And I'm so glad they made that adjustment in college football that First down, not stopping after every, or the clock not stopping after every single first down. That made them games so damn long. I mean, games would be four, four and a half hours, man. You do that. Now, after the two-minute warning, I don't have a problem with that. It's not as frequent. But, boy, during the whole game, man. I mean, college games just last seem to last so much longer anyway. But, sweet jeez. Going deep. Can we get the man? Got him. What a throw. And that is a touchdown. I thought he was going to end up stopping over the middle of the field for some reason. But we are in there for the score. Blue Raiders taking it to FCS here. Once again, as we should. And it's our fifth touchdown of the day here. Fourth on the offense. And it's a third touchdown pass. Javante Sherman coming across the field right before our quarterback was drilled. And that is going to be a touchdown, his third touchdown pass of the day. You know what I do, hate? I hate that they got rid of mass subs, boy, because that made things so much easier, man, especially when you're getting into blowout games, to just go ahead and put your backups in. But now you would have to individually do that, or the game has to do it themselves. And, ooh, that ball looked like that came out at the end. I don't think he completed the process to the ground there, but all right, whatever. But, yeah, I really hate that they got rid of that, man. That, that, that was like, I thought was hopefully going to be a given as we miss our third pick of the day. Almost had it. Tried to flash in, uh, in front of him there, but now that we get it done, all good. See if we can get the stop here on third and inches. Got to expect they're going to be going for it here, and that one's going to be incomplete. So, three straight incompletions. Maybe even four straight, uh, two straight incompletions. Maybe even three straight. That first one, man, I don't know about that. That one looked a little sketchy. But here we go. We got to, uh... It's option the quarterback here. Got to think they're going to be going to the ground game here. And they are. The quarterback's going to keep it. And, oh, we're going to hit him forward. No. Oh, man. Hit him forward, 46. You got to just drag his ass back. It's the quarterback. He can't be that damn strong. It's not Cam Newton having to pull back or anything. First and 10, back to throw. Going over the middle. Curtis lays the hit. Picks up a gain of five for the tight end. All right, looking to get off the field here. Third down and five. Can the defense get off? And they're taking a shot and picked off. McDonald's got it. 
McDonald looking to find a way to crib a second pick six. Not going to happen for the team with second pick six. But he get inside the 40-yard line. There's five minutes left here. And that will pretty much do it here in Murfreesboro. If we can just go ahead and get another score, that will really put, be the writing on the wall there. And yeah, you can see Colton Staff, they kind of believe in it too. They're just going to probably have us starting to run the ball a lot more. And hand off the peasant. Peasant breaks free. What a man to beat. He's going to make a miss. Peasant all the way. It's a one play touchdown. And the Blue Raiders strike again here. And it's been a second half domination. This is what we were looking for when we started the game. First half was a bit of a pretty shaky. We were just trying to get used to the squad. And now we're feeling a lot better here as we're going to go ahead and go up 28 points here. Assuming we made the extra point. Never know. But Frank Peasant. Able to break one loose, made a man miss, got him up out of there, and he is off to the races for the another, another score, his second of the day. And there's also a 120-yard performance for Frank Peasant. Not a bad day or uh, season debut. Not bad at all. You'd love to see it. I don't know how much more of this game we're going to show. Y'all might not even be seeing this. We might be cutting through stuff. So, I guess we'll see. You know what ends up happening. If any big stuff happens, I guess, but... Back to throw once again here, and oh, it ends up being caught McDonald this time. Oh, actually, no, that's not McDonald over there. Who's 23? Anyway, we're not able to make the play there. That was, I thought we were going to get another pick. I thought we were having our fourth of the day. Unfortunately, not able to get it. Oh, boy. Tight end trying to make a play up field, and it'll be bumped out of bounds. First down and goal. Offensive lineman down for FCS. They're looking to knock on the door, looking for their first points of the half. Defense has done well, shutting them down. But right now, kind of giving up some yards and whatnot. So looking to get off the field and touchdown Panthers. McDonald got the pick last time. This time he will surrender the touchdown to Chandler. And that will put them on the board. Cut the lead in half. <laughs> or cut the deficit for them in half, I should say. All right, let's get the hand team on the here, and let's go ahead and put this one away. If we can just go ahead and recover the onside kick. Oh, it went over our first dude's heads, but all good. We got it here, though. Willie is going to take it inside the 10, almost take the onside kick all the way back. That would have been unreal. That would have been absolutely insane if he would have did that. But hey, he's going to give us a first down and goal. Hey, I'm not complaining about it. Man in motion here. I'm just going to hand it off. Peasant breaks a tackle. Peasant still on his feet down inside the five. That'll take us to the two-minute warning. Looks like it was also a knee. So here we go. Third down and goal here. Actually going to hand it off to Peasant. He'll walk in untouched. All right, then. Well, his third rushing touchdown of the day. And the Blue Raiders once again making it easy. Another touchdown, our seventh of the day to go up almost, almost a 50-burger for us. Minute 15 left, though, and we will go ahead and see this one to the end. That's, that's did a good job, man. I did a good job. Second half, way better than that first half. Yeah, well, wow, they're going to strike again over the middle. They were giving up 28 points. They just went four verticals, and he just went straight down the middle of the field on us, and nobody able to cover him, and that is another score. Well, and a four-touchdown pass for this quarterback. 344 passing yards on the day. All right, we will go to a knee, and that will do it here in Murfreesboro. I don't know why the why we don't get the little thing that where the clock just runs off on its own automatically. They're clearly not calling timeouts. They were never going to down 21. They kicked off. They didn't even onside kickers. They just they literally kicked the deep. So that is gonna do it here in week number one. 49-28 is your final, and we will take it. To start off 1-0 and o on the season, let's go. I think it's a Vatitiado. I don't know how you pronounce his last name. I'm going to probably butcher the hell out of that. But Frank Peasant gets the play of the game. 16 carries, 130 yards, and three rushing touchdowns. Able to help give us the win here. And had a nice day, man. Made a lovely big touchdown run. Helped put it away with that nice juke. And all Harris, man. Had showed the pick six, and then he showed the first play of the game. <laughs> He gets beat there. But, man, does every team do this? Come on now. Yeah, I think every single team does that at the end of the game on this game. I don't think that's like a real thing where everybody, all these teams do it. There are some teams that do do that, like with their student section and whatnot. I think you is one of them. But yeah. Hey, we got a nice level up, though. Going to level three gives us 10 points for the coaching stuff. So, you love to see that. Definitely are going to need that as we move on. Ooh, that puts us at 20 now. 
Okay, well, we got some stuff we definitely need to uh, work on then. Like I said, he is a receiver guy first. I I know I know it, it doesn't really make sense for me to go with this, Ray, but hey, he knows wideouts. That's just kind of how we're going to be with him. Bob Miller knows wideouts here early on better than anybody. And now we'll kind of start looking at some other guys like quarterback and then, you know, the other stuff. So I wanted to make sure that that was just kind of, you know, make it kind of feel that way. He knows he's going to know more about that. He'll know more about, you know, quarterbacks a little bit too, being, you know, being close to the quarterback he was with, you know, and then the time he spent in the NFL too. So, yeah, but, hey, good start here. You know, we got some points lined up with him, and we'll move on to the next week here and go ahead and sim on through and, Let's see how week two is going to be looking up. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I don't recall who we're going to end up playing, but ooh, who's in the first place on some guys? Yes, sir. Well, Blado, stadium atmosphere went down. Dang, how'd we lose atmosphere? I mean, granted, we ain't got nothing crazy anyway, but man, we got some people at risk there. All right, well, it is what it is. I don't. I really can't do anything. We won the game, so I can't really do much about that. But, hey, we're moving up on Quentin Rose as well. you love to see that. Keeping up, Johnny Wiley. Yes, sir. Hey, that is perfectly fine with me. You love to see it. We got uh, more recruiting. Going to be coming up here in the next episode. And Brendan Harris gets player of the week for the CUSA. Yes, sir. Got a four tackles and a pick six. Let's get it. Ooh, got Ole Miss was sitting at rank four. Oh, this ain't going to be fun at all, y'all. This ain't going to be fun at all. But, hey, a player of the week, not bad, man. That's that's not bad. That's a good way to end it off. But that is where we're going to bring, bring this one to a close. Everybody, hope you guys enjoyed the first rendition here of the MTSU Rebuild Dynasty here on College Football 25, man. What Y'all want to call it CFB 25? Y'all want to go with NCAA 25? I'm going to call it CFB. That's just kind of, I mean, that's the name of it. It's no longer NCAA which, anymore. But I don't care what anybody calls it. I'm going to call it that if y'all don't like it. Oh, well. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what we're going to read to a close, everybody. Once again, thank you all very much for watching. If y'all enjoyed it, man, make sure you guys hit that like button for me. I really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Once again, we're on that road to 1,000, trying to get there as quick as we can, man. If y'all are new here, like I said, hit that sub button for me, man. I really appreciate it. Um, if you, you know, if you enjoyed the video, man, make sure you guys leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on everything. But that is where we'll bring it to a close. I'm out to next time, everybody. Hope you guys stay safe out there. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, God bless and peace. Close it out, future.